What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me where today we're going to create this shark design. Now as always there's links in the description down below to the requirements which will be the canvas size. There's also a link to the brush that you're going to need for the shark here. I've made it as a stamp. There's also a helpful video if you've never installed brushes before so be sure to check all that out as well. As well as the palette you can either pause on the screen now and grab the color from there or you can download this image or you can download the actual palette. So many ways you can grab the content, whichever one you feel most comfortable with. But as always, there's always helpful videos in the requirements in case you need any help with adding in any of the content for today's design. So have some fun with today's design. Thank you so much for watching. And with all that said, let's get started. So to get started, what we wanna go ahead and do is go over to our brush and we're gonna to go to the fills option here. And we're gonna use the solid fill brush. We're then going to go ahead and make sure our color, let's just set it to black first of all in the bottom of the palette. So the first color on the palette. Then we're going to go ahead and go up to our tools. We're going to go ahead and under symmetry, we're going to use the option of vertical and we'll hit the lock straight away just so we can keep things nice and centered. So we'll tap on the lock. Then what we'll do is we'll go up to our create options and we're going to grab the circle tool here. And we're gonna go ahead and draw out a circle from here. Now you wanna press down perfectly on the middle line there as best you can. If you happen to miss it ever so slightly, you can go ahead and drag that middle node there just onto that middle line to show it's nice and centered like so. And we may even wanna just move that down just a smidge for the moment. Then what we'll go ahead and do is we'll tap on our circle tool cause we're done with it. We will go ahead and I'm just gonna create a new layer for a moment. I'm gonna to go to my create options. I'm gonna to go to the option of the line shape here. I'm then gonna to go to my brush. I'm gonna change it to the option of calligraphy and we're gonna use the monoline brush. The size of the brush doesn't really matter too much but we'll keep it relatively small, about eight for the moment. And what we're gonna try and do is right at the top here on the line as best you can, drag down until your line starts to run into those edges of the circle nice and perfectly. And again, you may need to zoom in and just realign these little dots here perfectly on that center point. So just making sure you hit that as best you can and zoom in out. You should then be able to check the sides and make sure that they also run in nice and easy. So it's something like this perfectly into the side of our little circle there. And we can tap on our line tool when we're done. We can tap on the lines layer and tap on it and use the option of merge and that'll push it down a layer. Then what we can do is go to our create options and the fill option here. We'll tap in this area here and we'll tap a few times and drag to the right hand side just to make sure we fill in that space perfectly and hit the tick here at the top when you're done. Now you should have your basic shape now of your water droplet so you can adjust this if needs be. So you, now what you'll have is your little water droplet ready to go for the rest of the design. Now what we want to do though is we want to sort of invert this. We want to create a frame around the outside not in the middle. So I'm gonna first of all go to my create options and I'm just gonna make sure that if I go ahead and go to edit and I go to basic transformation, that I just move this down just a tiny bit so it fits perfectly in the center of our sort of canvas, making sure we're a little bit lower there and hitting the tick when I'm done. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna tap on this layer and we're gonna use the option here of select. That will select that shape. But if we go up here and we go up to this icon here, we'll be able to use the option of invert. So we'll tap on invert, that will select everything but the water droplet. Then we'll create a new layer. We'll go to our create options, we'll go to the fill option. We'll tap on the fill and we'll tap outside here. And then if we hit the tick, what we've basically done then, if we tap on our little cancel of our selection, if we tap on the original layer we had here on the inside, if we tap on it and use the option of delete, we've now created a frame around the outside which will keep everything nice and contained on the inside. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. Let's drag it underneath our frame. Pretty much everything is gonna sit underneath there. And now what we're gonna do is on this empty layer, we're gonna make sure our brush is still set to the mono line. You can make your brush size a bit small, maybe about 8%. That will do some nice smaller shapes. We're then gonna go ahead and create a bit of a bumpy lumpy edge first of all to this side. So, and the opposite side as well. So we'll just create some nice bumpy lumpy sort of rocky area down here. Trying to create a really fun little area down here where our coral is going to be some maybe bigger rocky edges over on the side and then i'm going to go all the way around to my start point 
linking that up so I can then go back to my fill tool and I can tap in that little gap there and drag to the right just a few times just to fill it in a bit more and hit the tick when you're done. And then once you've done that, we can then basically zoom in and create some fun little different bits of coral. Now I don't know the specific name of this, but we can create this sort of like underwater branching off kind of tree. So we create this sort of basic line first of all. And then what we do is we just create branches off from there and just zigzag them and we just continue to just split them off. So you create this really fun split off sort of coral look to it, breaking that off like so. And then we'll just continue to do that at the top. So we'll break it off there. We'll create a branch and then break that off again into twos. We'll create another branch off here and break that off into two. And we'll just continue to do that all the way around. And you can maybe start to go in here and thicken up the main area through the middle as it gets closer to the edge. You can just really thicken that up a little bit more using the brush. And then we'll create another one out here where we'll then go one way, break them off. You can then go ahead and just create break offs from here, creating some really fun little shapes like so. So it's always like breaking them off and then just, just give it a sort of bit of breathing space here and there where you can then just start to branch it off into all the gaps. And you should be able to create something really fun like this. So you've got a little bit of sort of underwater coral. And then what we'll also do is, that's one style you can do. We can then go ahead and maybe create some sort of bumpy, really very kind of rocky look underneath and we'll just sort of manually fill that in. And we're gonna make our way all the way around the bottom. So we'll do that first. And then what we'll do is maybe make the brush a little bit smaller, maybe down to about sort of four to three. And we'll create some sort of rocky ledges of coral that are just making their way out a little bit sort of horizontally. So we'll come across here. I'll then do another ledge here. Just little sort of that horizontal kind of coral and just like so and then go all the way around to my start point so I can go back to my fill tap in there and tap in there a few times just to fill them in as well and then you can create that kind of coral what you can then also do as another addition is add in some seaweed so we'll go down here we'll create some nice wavy lines and then you kind of want to make them a little bit thicker as they get towards the bottom go to your fill tool you can always tap on that and fill it in. Tap and drag a few times just to make sure you fill it in properly. And then what we can do is from there, create some more. So some slightly smaller seaweed, like so. You could use the fill tool for this one if that's your preferred sort of brush for this. For me, it doesn't have that kind of smoothness that I want for this. I'm just gonna create some fun looking wavy lines in my seaweed. Create some that are a little bit different from one another, just to vary them up. And keep jumping back to your fill tool just to tap and just fill that in just to save some time fill in the gaps we go all the way down to the bottom of course so make my brush size a bit bigger again back up to about eight just so i can speed up this sort of phase of the design but you can see there are a few different examples of what it is we can do and then you just want to basically make your way all the way around there is one more you can do if we make our brush size smaller again about sort of four percent we can create some very small sort of little flick offs here, sort of either like little small pieces of seaweed, but little sort of areas of the coral underneath that are just sort of flicked out from these areas here. You can add as many little sort of uh, arms off from this as you like, just some like this, and have some fun with it. Create a fun little landscape. You can then integrate maybe a little bit of seaweed in there, and fill in that sort of space with the seaweed. Spend as long as you like just filling in your little sort of underwater scene and filling it in to your heart's content. But we'll go ahead now and just add in some more in there. And then I'll maybe just add in a couple of flicks at the bottom just to break that up. You can also add in some sort of rocky random ledges. So maybe a little bolder sort of shape like this. Link that up top to bottom. I can even just make my brush size a bit bigger. It's about eight or nine and just fill that in a little bit quicker. But that will nicely give you some more variation on the side of your design and just keep making your way all the way around so maybe down here i'll just create like a big rock a little something like this and then a smaller rock off to the side and again just link them up at the bottom we'll jump back to our fill tool and we'll tap in them a few times hit the tick and just fill in any gaps that we feel is necessary and then i'm going to go ahead and add in some more seaweed down here so just to bigger shape this time. I'm going to start a little bit thicker at the bottom. 
So I've tried to vary them up from one another. So that one's a little bit thicker than the other. Again, I'm going to keep jumping back to my fill tool here just to quickly fill in the gaps. And then maybe another one off to the side of it, a little something like this. And this is really fun, really sort of therapeutic just to create this really fun underwater design. And then we can replicate some of these over here on the left as well. So a little bit lower down. So just creating that sort of horizontal sort of ledges and whatnot in your shapes, a little bit like this. Let that just run in. And then I'm going to go from my start point all the way around just so I can fill in the gaps. So jumping back to the fill option, filling in those gaps, and then just any little gaps that have been left over. But there, using a bit of balance there to sort of balance out the whole design, we can create another one of this over here as well. So we can make a much bigger one. So what you can do is we can make our brush size a bit bigger, maybe around about sort of 15, and we'll create the main body first of all. So we'll create like a big sort of main trunk area and let that just branch off onto the sides there, like so. And then from there, we'll reduce our brush size maybe down to about sort of, let's go down to about nine and then branch off from there too. So one off to there, maybe one off to there. So with this one, I'm doing it a little bit differently where we're creating all the branches first and then we'll work out what we can break off from there later on. I'll create a branch off from the top here and also another one off from there. I'll also create one that branches off from here and maybe even one just here as well. That one we can then branch off again. So I'm creating all the branches first before we create the final little bits on the ends. So some big branches. Don't be afraid to also thicken them up as they get a little bit closer towards the original sort of trunk area. I'll create another one here too and another one venturing off from there. Another one venturing off from here and maybe even another one from here just to thicken up and fill out this sort of space down here as well. So you'll get something like this, then make your brush size a bit smaller again, maybe down to about three and just add in and make your brush size a bit smaller, maybe not to three, maybe a bit bigger than that, maybe around about five to six and just add in those final little bits on the end. So we'll get really small. You can create little branches off and just smaller ones off of the ends, little ones like this off the end and this is take a little bit of time look at any gaps maybe fill them in you can leave the odd sort of little bit on its own but try to fill in the majority of the shape so this one here takes a little while but we'll just go ahead and fill that in just as we did before so lots of small little branches off from the ends and don't have to be too sort of particular over it just have some fun fill it in those little gaps and you want to create like a almost like a tree so we'll just Fill in all these little gaps here, little gaps. And this will really give us some nice detail at this sort of lower level of the design. A couple of branches off from here. And just creating those little V's on the end. And then maybe the odd one that branches off from there too. That's fine too. So I could do the same for example here. You could add any little V on the end of all of them if you really wanted to really get really detailed with it. It's totally up to you. Create some here. And I want to make sure I fill in as much of the gaps as possible. So I'll maybe just add in a few here. Don't be afraid, again, just to thicken them up as they run into sort of the main trunk area of this bit of coral. Maybe just one off from that one just to fill in the gap. I can fill in the gap a little bit better there. Maybe even here too. Just filling that in a bit more. Zoom out, always zoom out, take a look at what you've done so far, making sure you've not gone in a particular direction too much and don't get lost in the details as I always say. Just take a look at what you've achieved so far. Sometimes being very zoomed in like this, you will just sort of try to add too much. But when you zoom out, you realize that it doesn't really add too much to the overall design. So it's not really worth your time to carry on. Let's then fill in these areas too. And I'm just branching them off from each other constantly, trying to create all these little avenues. Here, I've got a little bit of a gap, so I'm just going to create a bit of a thicker sort of stem area there. Branch that off from there, like so. Let's move around to here as well. We'll thicken that up into there, and we'll branch these off. Branch, branch, 
brand so don't spend too much time on this and I don't typically in my tutorials if you're new here I don't tend to jump ahead so if you're sick of this particular stage you can go ahead and skip ahead if needs be but I don't tend to skip anything in my tutorials I like to do it with you in real time so you can get an idea for maybe a few things along the road that maybe I do that you may otherwise miss by jumping ahead so I like to do it all together with us so you can not miss a single trick that maybe I've got up my sleeve for each sort of area or just any little random piece of advice so we'll just keep going with that one and to me that one looks great nice big one there over on the left hand side gives us lots of detail and then I'm going to go ahead then and move on from there I'm going to create some of these smaller little flick offs that we were creating earlier so just little flicks down here a couple closer to this rock maybe that will nicely tie them in a little bit closer together I can create tiny little bits of seaweed if I want to really small bits just like very small blades maybe even just like one flicking off from there on the side that'll look really nice we've got loads of little bits of detail happening in there I'm going to create some nice big bits of blade of seaweed up here make my brush size a bit bigger at this occasion just filling that in brush size doesn't really matter it's just what it is you're trying to achieve like I want to try and just create some nice big blades of seaweed up here so I want to make sure my brush is a little bit bigger just to fill them in a little bit quicker a nice big blade up there on the back area and we can overlap some if we want to so maybe make it a bit smaller maybe down to about six percent again and maybe just introduce one in here that maybe just really fills out that space so I'll go to my fill tool tap in there and in there and I'll just use my pen just to manually just add in the odd little bits that have been missed I don't mind if there's the odd little white bit it's fine but that will give it a nice big dense area over there and then I think what we'll also do is this is looking a little bit empty so maybe I'll just create a big sort of rock area here like so maybe go round and then go to my fill tool tap in there just to give a little bit more detail in that one that one looks pretty good to me and to be honest with you how the way that this design will go you can come back to this at any point so don't worry about sort of adding too much at this stage you can always add some later on and then taking a look at your design you can maybe start to make a sort of bigger effort to maybe balance out the piece a little bit more so I can go back to my brush once more and just maybe add in a few bigger areas down here I could maybe even extend this sort of coral effect over here so maybe make it a little bit bigger I might have to make my brush a bit bigger again just to fill in those gaps so just going to create some bumpy lumpy shapes fill in the majority of that make my brush a bit smaller again just to just to fill in I know you could use the fill tool but I think it's quite a small area and then I'll maybe just create some more here so just making their way across and maybe another one just underneath it with a little bit of a drop off underneath so I'll go round on those two grab my fill tool and fill in those gaps in the tick when I'm done and then when we take a look at that that kind of has a little bit more balance between the two and then what we'll do is we'll create a new layer and we're going to go ahead and with our brush let's just lower the size down to maybe around about sort of five we'll zoom in and we're just going to create a fish a very basic fish so you kind of want to create a bit of a diamond look like this a little bit of a diamond look this will be the front this will be the back and then we can create sort of a half crescent like so with just a little half crescent of a moon back there and then maybe just the odd little fin off from here and then you want to fill that all in so you go up to your fill tool fill those in I'll just fill in the gaps manually that's fine just creating our little fish shape till you've got something that you like the look of and then just go to that layer duplicate it a few times I'm gonna grab my edit option of the basic transformation I'll move this one over here hit the tick when I'm done I've got another one I'll go to my edit option again I'll go to edit we will go to basic transformation I'm gonna make this one smaller move it down and maybe even flip it horizontal so there's a couple of fish down there hit the tick when I'm done and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the main one that I created go to my edit options and we'll go to basic transformation just move that over to the right maybe even make it a little bit bigger I'll flip it horizontally on this occasion and just chuck it in this space over there and hit the tick when I'm done so that's what I'm going to go with you can come back to it again at any stage and add in some more 
then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and merge those layers together just to save on your layer count. So we'll go ahead and tap on the fish, we'll merge it down, we'll tap on the fish, we'll merge it down and we'll tap on the other fish and merge it down. So it's all onto one layer. Then what we'll do is create a new layer again and drag it underneath that sort of bit of detail that we created. Let's then go to our colors. We're gonna go ahead and grab this color here. It's on the far right of the palette. And we're gonna start creating our first little sort of ledges of the background area. So you kind of wanna create sort of a step effect. So for example, we'll come across, we'll come down, and then you wanna just go down and down and down, kind of like this, and then maybe up and up and up. That's just an example line, just to give you sort of a, a guide as to what to add in. So we'll undo that. What we wanna do is I'll make my brush size maybe a little bit bigger, maybe up to about 10. And then over here on the right, just up higher than where our sort of coral area starts at the front. I'm gonna go ahead and just come in from the side there and just create some little ledges down towards the middle. Then I'm gonna create an upward bit towards the center here and then down again, letting that go all the way around and then just creating some really bumpy lumpy ledges all the way off to the side. And then what you may need to do like mine, my little bump in the middle is not centered and it's throwing me off a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to my edit option, grab the basic transform tool. I'm gonna to move that into the center before I go any further. So something maybe around about this. That looks good to me in terms of just a nice balance. Hit the tick when I'm done. And then I can come over here to the side and just continue on my line over to the edge. Now I'm gonna go from one side, I'm gonna go all the way around to my start point over here so that I can then go to my create option and the fill and tap in that space and tap and drag a few times from left to right just to make sure your threshold fills in all those nice little random white gaps that are left behind and hit the tick when you're done. Then what we'll do is we'll create another new layer. We'll drag it underneath that layer. We'll change our color. We'll go to the next color along. So it's the second color from the right and we'll add in one more layer of the, sort of the ground coral area. This one again, I'm gonna kind of have that nice little swooping effect, but it's just gonna be a little bit higher. So I'm gonna come down from here. I'll maybe wrap under myself a little bit, create something a little bit different. A little bump in the middle maybe, and then up, up over towards the sides over here. And then take a look at it, make sure you're sort of happy with how it balances out. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna go round from my end point over here. I'm gonna go all the way around to my start point. And then I'm gonna to go to my edit options or create options and go to fill and tap in that space and drag from left to right again a few times just to fill in all those white little gaps with your threshold and hit the tick when you're done. So now you should have a nice big scene coming together. Then what we wanna go ahead and do is add in the background gradient. So we're gonna create a new layer, gonna drag it underneath that set of rocky areas that we just made. We're gonna to go to our options. We're gonna to go to the gradient under create we're going to change this from linear. We're going to change it to radial. We're going to zoom out a little bit because we need to drag from the top all the way down towards the bottom, down here. And then with that radial, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to tap at the bottom of that line of our colors. We're going to grab this color, the fourth color on the palette. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and roughly in the middle, we'll tap on the line to add another color and we'll tap on that and we'll change it to the third color. Then what we'll do is up towards the top, we'll tap on that probably about a quarter down for a minute. We'll tap on that. We'll change it to the second color in the palette. And then the top one on its own at the very top, we will tap on it and we'll change it to white by dragging all the way up into the top left. So now you should have a really beautiful gradient from the top and you can mess around with these points, maybe drag this one down a little bit to get a bit more of that green in there and maybe just reduce the white a little bit or make it even bigger, it's totally up to you. And then you should end up with a little bit of a white-ish glow in behind here. And hit the tick when you're done. So now we've got a nice big gradient there in the background. The next step is to add in some highlights onto those ledges. So we're gonna go ahead and go to this layer here. You'll see it flash on the screen. I'll turn it on and off just to be sure, which is this one here. I'm gonna create a new layer above it. I'm gonna tap on that layer and clip it to that layer. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my colors. I'm gonna grab this color here, the second color in the palette. I'm gonna to go to my brush. And we're gonna to go to pens and we're gonna use the tapered inker. Now the brush size by default is about 25 and that's what we'll roll with for a minute. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to create some ledges that are getting some light from above. So what we'll do is down here, we're just going to go ahead and just create a little bit of a little area here. And then anything that's basically got a flat edge, you kind of have the ability then just to create a little bit of a ledge like that, where the lighting is coming down from the top. And we can just nicely add in a little bit of lighting. So we can just press really lightly and just link that up like here almost, almost linking that up. We'll then go ahead and maybe introduce some more random little smaller areas here where just that lighting's coming down from the top, catching on a few different surfaces. We'll maybe just create a little bit of a ridge here. We'll create a few bumps and lumps over here as well. Now this brush starts to expand, so just bear that in mind as you make your way up. And then over here with these ledges, you should have the ability then just to create these kind of really cool rounded sort of shapes and create some flat surfaces on the side here where the lighting again is just making its way down from the top you can create random little sort of streaks in there if you want to kind of up the level of detail and even here as well i'll create a nice flick off to the right and just flick that up the side a little bit maybe even make that a little bit bumpy and lumpy just to make that rocky look a bit more believable so you're creating all these really fun ledges that are coming down from the top and the surface so i'm going to go ahead then and go basically down the top here and maybe round on myself a tiny bit. So we're kind of repeating a style quite frequently across this, but it's just to pull off that nice little bit of lighting from the top. We're gonna to lower the opacity down of this in a second anyway, so it won't be quite so bright later on. We'll do the same over on the left-hand side. So we'll come down sort of the top edges. You can just come down the bumps pretty much and then occasionally just wrap it round, trying to give off the impression that it, the surface then flattens itself a little bit more. So a little something like this. Turn off your front layer if you need to, just to see the shapes that you've created. So like here, I've got a bit of a downward bit and then I can nicely roll that around, creating a big flat surface there. Zooming out as always will really give you that impression and let you see what it is we're trying to achieve. Maybe just a, a little sort of bump and lump in here where there's a rock catching the light. Down here, I've got a really nice big flat surface. So I'm gonna make this nice and big. Maybe another one just here to put a slightly smaller one. These are all just sort of flat surfaces that are just catching that little bit of light from above. I'm going to go ahead and just create another little flick here, another little flick there, just to add in a few little extra specks of detail and maybe even just make it a little bit more bumpy and lumpy. A little something like this. And again, zoom out. Take a look at both sides always. Make sure you're nice and balanced. And then I can also go ahead and turn on that front layer again now just to get that full impression. And then while we're working in this area, we're going to go to the layer itself. So this little area of rock, we're going to tap on it and we're going to go ahead and alpha lock it. So we're going to tap on the lock here for alpha. Then we're going to go ahead and go to our brush. We're going to go to sprayers and we're going to go ahead and use the soft air brush here. And we're going to make that brush size. It's about 407 at the minute. That's good for a minute. And using the exact same color, we're just going to very lightly towards the top, just add in a little bit of a light glow from that top edge so we're just adding in a little bit of a glow onto that rocky edge there a little bit more on the left will do quite nice so just a little bit more on those edges and then what we'll do is we'll go back up to our little lines that we made or the little nice details we'll tap on the layer and we'll lower the opacity down and we're going to drop it down to maybe about 50 percent that will just give us a much less sort of bold look to those highlights we're then going to repeat those steps for the layer behind so we're going to go down to that layer create a new layer. We're going to go ahead and go back to our brush under the option of pens and the tapered inker. Same color still, but we're just going to go ahead and do exactly the same, except the only thing you kind of want to achieve at this point is just making sure that these are a little bit smaller than the other ones that you just created. So because they're a little bit further back, we want to kind of keep the detail progressively smaller as it makes its way backwards. And you don't always have to do that little flick off to the right, like a very large one. You can do one like this. We can go ahead then and go down here. I'll just round off to there. Maybe even just a, like a sort of second ledge really close to it by adding in these little dashes. And then we'll go down this area here into that flatter surface down here. We've not got much going on down here in terms of like a surface area. So maybe I'll just wrap this around this little sort of mound here on the floor and then just run that off towards the right. Just run that off, fill in the gap, a little something like that. 
maybe a little speck here and there of just smaller details. Then let's move across to the left and I've got this big ledge here. Again, reminding myself that we've got that sort of be a bit smaller with our details because it's a bit further back. I'll create some nice shapes down the side here. A little something like this. Maybe even just wrap a smaller area at the top. Zooming out, taking a look at your overall impression. That looks nice. Let's then come down this ledge and down towards the middle. I'm just filling in any smaller little gaps where we can. Zooming out, take a look at the two sides. I can see I've got a bit more detail on the right. So maybe I'll just go over here and just start to add in a couple of extra streaks here and there. Just where there's the odd little bit that's just catching the light in a bit more. Uh, just to balance out the design. That's always a key thing to remind, remind yourself, should I say, is just making sure that the design is nice and balanced. Then we'll go down to the shape again. We'll tap on it and we will alpha lock it. We'll go to our brush again and we'll go to the option of sprayers. And we're going to scroll down in sprayers until we get to the soft airbrush. And just again, we're going to go ahead and on that top edge, just very lightly just adding in a really nice bit of colour from above which will just pull off that top lighting effect. And again, we'll then go up a layer to our little effects that we just added. And we're gonna tap on that and we're gonna lower the opacity. We're gonna make it a bit lower this time though, because things are getting further away. They'd be a bit more murky. So we're gonna drop it down to this level here, about 25% on the opacity. And now what we need to do is add in our main subject, which is gonna be the stamp that I provided for the shark. So we're gonna go ahead now and underneath our sort of coral at the front here, we're going to create a new layer. So we'll create a new layer and just drag it underneath the coral. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab this color here on the far right of the palette. We're going to go to our brush and for you, it will be under the option of downloaded, but under created for myself, I've got the shark stamp by Joel Designs and the size is set to maximum at the minute. And I'm going to tap somewhat in the middle of the screen to get my shark. And then what I'm going to do is go up to my create options, well edit, Go to transform and basic, and we'll just scale this down in size a little bit. It's going to be our main subject. It's going to sit right in the middle of our design. So you want to try and balance it on either side. And a little bit something like this for positioning is pretty good. Maybe I could make it a little bit higher and hit the tick when I'm done. And the only thing we're going to do for this is we're going to create a new layer. We're going to tap on that layer and clip it to the shark. And then we're going to go to our colors again. We're going to grab this color here, the second color. We're going to go to our brushes again and go to the soft airbrush yet again. So we're going to go to the option of sprayers and we're going to use that soft airbrush. I'm going to make the brush size a bit smaller on this occasion. I'm going to drop it down to maybe around about sort of that 140 mark. And just on the underside of the shark, we're going to just add in a little bit of a glow. So very lightly, just under the sort of belly and the face, a little bit of an underglow where that light is bouncing around. Then what we'll do is we'll change our color We'll change it to white by dragging all the way up into the top left and add in the very lightest bit of glow from the top here. So just a little bit of light in on that top edge of the shark just to create more of a lighting look to it. If you press really firm or you don't have pressure sensitivity, just simply tap on the layer and lower the opacity down to something that you're more comfortable with until you get a look like this. And now what we're gonna do is create the really cool lighting effects from the top which pulls this all together. So we're going to go ahead and above our layer that we're working on now, we'll create a new layer. We'll tap on this layer and make sure it's unclipped just so it's on its own. It's not affected by anything else. What we're then going to do is go to our colors, making sure it's still set to white. We're going to go to our brush and we're going to set this to fills and we're going to set it to solid fill. We're then going to go to our options up here and we're going to use the option of rectangle. And we're going to create a rectangle in the middle of the screen. So we're creating a big column basically like this. And we're only going to do this once, but just duplicate it multiple times. So then tap on your square option when you're done. Then we're going to go to our eraser and tap on the eraser. And we're going to go to sprayers and the soft airbrush. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to erase one side. So my brush size is currently set to 407, maybe a little bit too big. Maybe make it a bit smaller, about 350. And I'm just going to erase this edge. I'm going to go up and down it a few times until we basically create a really nice transition of white to nothing. We're going to erase this line ourselves. So we're going to go up and down, up and down, up and down until we get rid of that solid line on the right hand side. And also we want to slowly point it 
downwards into that rock sort of corner. So we're pointing it down into here in circular motion. Now I'm just going to blend out the bottom and get rid of that solid shape that's just remaining a little bit on the end there. And then I'm going to just eat away into this a tiny bit more until we end up with a really nice sort of column looking shape like this. Now what we then want to do is go to our create options Well, we're going to go to edit. We're going to go to edit and filters. We're going to grab structure and blur. And we're just going to blur this out a little bit. We want to sort of keep the majority of the shape, but to something around about 50, to be honest, looks pretty good. And I'm going to hit the tick when I'm done. If we tap on the layer and we change its blend mode from normal and we change it to overlay, it's immediately going to pull through a lot of those colors and it's going to give us a really awesome lighting effect. Then what we can do is go up to our tools. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to the option of basic transformation or we can jump straight to distort. It doesn't matter. And then we can grab, say, for example, this bottom middle node. We can drag it off to the left, but we want to point all of our light source at the top. So I'm going to drag it up towards that top area up there. So I'm going to drag one line into there, hit the tick when I'm done. And then I'm going to go to the layer, tap on it and duplicate it. And then what we'll do is we'll go up to our create options. We'll go to edit. We'll go to basic transformation. We'll go ahead then and we will flip it horizontally using this icon here. And then we'll move it around until it just about looks a bit different from that one. So you don't always want them going all the way down. You want them to sort of have different distances. And then if we go to basic and change it to, for example, let's go to uh, distort. We can go ahead and maybe move the top of the line into this light source at the top and then move this bottom node and just move it across to the angle, just changing up the angle, trying to make it a little bit different from one another. So I'll move this one across maybe into this area here and hit the tick when I'm done. I'll then go ahead and let's say duplicate that layer. So go to it and duplicate it. Go straight to the option of edit and we'll go to the option of distort. And again, just drag that node, making this one maybe really, really short potentially. So I can maybe adjust it to like just this distance here and then hit the tick when I'm done. You'll notice at the top, it's getting a little bit bright. So we'll just come back to that in a second because we'll just basically erase a few of them from that top edge. And then over there on the left, we should have one just here, which we do. I'm going to tap on that layer and duplicate it. I'm going to go ahead and grab the edit option. So edit and basic transformation. Make this a bit smaller, move it off to the side, grab my distort option again, just so I can maybe drag that top node and point it towards our light source. That's key every single time is to point it towards our light source so it's more believable. So a little something like this, and maybe just change that angle across a bit more, pointing it up there and then hit the tick when I'm done. So you, I've got four there, so we've got a nice little bit of symmetry, but the lines are all different distances, which really changes the whole lighting effect. Now what we can do is we can actually go ahead and we can start to erase from the top here. That's a little bit too bright for me. So on some of those, I'm just gonna grab my eraser, making sure it is set to the soft airbrush. The one I'm currently about to erase is this main one here. And just at the top only, just gonna erase into that a little bit. And then make my way down through all of the lines and just erase a little bit from the top on all of them, just to tone that down a little bit more from that top edge. So you've got a light source up there, but it's not quite that bright. And I'll just mess around with those a few more until I get the exact look that I like. And then the final thing to do is create a fun little bubble. So we're going to go ahead then and create another new layer. We're going to make sure our brush is set to fills and the solid fill. We're going to go to our create options and the circle tool here. We're going to drag outwards, creating a circle first of all. Then we'll go ahead and tap on our circle tool when we're done. We'll grab our eraser. We'll zoom in on the circle. Tap on the eraser, making sure we set it to sprayers and the soft airbrush still. The size wants to be fairly small to start with, maybe around about sort of 80. And what we want to try and do is we'll erase the center. And as you go outwards, get really light with your pressure and then kind of pick an angle really that you like to erase from. So I'm going to erase almost from this bottom right edge making sure this is a little bit less white in comparison to say this top left corner. So just erasing from here, making sure the center is nice and completely erased till you end up with a little bubble looking shape like this. Again, we can tap on that layer. We can change its blend mode from normal. We can change it to say overlay. You'll get a little bit more of the colors around it involved. 
And then what we can do is we can go ahead and just duplicate this multiple times and fill out the whole top area of the scene with roughly around about sort of seven to eight. So I'm going to tap on this layer, I'm going to duplicate it, and then I'll go ahead and go to my create options. I'll go to edit, I'll grab the basic transformation, maybe make this a bit smaller, move that across, hit the tick when I'm done. And then maybe tap on that layer and duplicate that one if I like the size of it. We'll go back to the options up here and go to edit and we'll go to basic transformation and maybe just scale it down, rotate it a little bit so you can move those nodes around, move it into position like so and hit the tick when you're done. Go back to maybe your main one in the middle and tap on that, duplicate it, tap on your create options and edit and basic transformation, scale it down in size, maybe move one up towards the top up here, hit the tick. And to be honest, I'll probably just scale the big one down now. So I'll just grab my create option, go to edit, transform, and just scale that down in size. Move these over to maybe the right hand side or even a bit lower down. So have some fun just filling out the whole of the top area. Again, you want about seven or eight. So just tap on the layer, duplicate it, go back to edit and transformation and just make them a bit smaller. Filling in the design a little bit more, hitting the tick. I think I'll create a bigger one in the center. So I'll tap on any one of these and duplicate it. Grab my create option and edit. Grab the basic option and maybe just move one up into this space here. And then I'm going to go ahead and find the biggest one, which I think is over there on the left hand side. So it's one of the first ones we created. I'm going to find the bubble there on the left hand side there. Tap on it and then duplicate it. I'm going to go to the edit basic transformation and just make that a little bit bigger in the center hitting the tick when i'm done so we've got currently got about seven i think we can just maybe add in one more in this space down here so i'm going to go ahead and just tap on any one of them that i like the look of duplicate it grab my edit transformation and just move it into that space again you kind of always want to look for balance so i've put one there just to try and sort of balance out the design because we've got quite a heavy right side there i could even potentially duplicate that one more time Go to edit transformation again and just move one over here, which would really, really balance out the whole design. And if I go ahead now and pinch with two fingers, we go full screen with four. We end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed this shark design. As always, please be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram. I've created a Facebook group as well. So if you're an enthusiast of Infinite Painter, there'll be a link in the description down below and you can come and join in with the community over there. And if you liked this video, you'll probably like this one on the screen now. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all your support here on the channel. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.